Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris and my guest is Dante King. Uh, Dante has written a book. I tell you, it's a very powerful book. And if you read it closely, it really refutes a lot of the stuff you currently hear about critical race theory. Look, let's talk just for a, a minute or two about critical. Why is there so much emphasis on getting rid of critical race theory? Because it seems to me it's just history. It is, and people are using it as a political tool um, because they know that most people won't really dig into understanding what it is actually really about. And to the point that you just made, it's really a detailing of history and analyzing and making the case um, through that analyzing of history um, that all of the um, things that we see today mm -hmm. as a reality have been manufactured through state level, federal level um, legislation, as well as local policies and the enforcement of such. Yeah. Now, let me, uh, the Supreme Court just recently decided uh, to outlaw affirmative action. Any thoughts on that? Sure. I mean, it's no different than one of the Supreme Court decisions in 1883 that outlawed that black people would not have rights to jury service or public accommodations, even after we had been given those rights through the 14th Amendment, through the 15th Amendment. Um, the Supreme Court we've seen um, through this country's history can overturn legal precedent, and they, they do. And, they, and many, they do, that's correct. There are many cases when they have decided against themselves. For example, I look at the 1917 case, Buchanan v. Worley, where they mm -hmm. decided that racial uh, discrimination in housing was against the law. You see nine years later, in two cases, Corrigan v. Buckley, that allowed for developers to deed properties with whites only titles and deeds that made those properties only avail exclusively available to the white community. And then also Euclid v. Ambler, um, in that case that allowed cities and locales to zone whole neighborhoods by race. So whites can only live here, no Negroes allowed, no Chinese. So we see the Supreme Court, this history um, of the Supreme Court ruling against itself. And so no one should be surprised or shocked because there's much precedent for what's happening in this moment. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen it over the years from Dred Scott to Brown versus the Board of Education to Pleasant versus uh, Ferguson. It, it pretty much depends on uh, who, who is in power. In other words, many of the decisions of the United States Supreme Court are based solely, as the recent one was, on politics. And you, you can talk all this theory uh, all you want, but it was based on pure polit uh, politics. The only thing changed about the United States Supreme Court in the last couple of years or so uh, was the composition. That's right. and, uh, and, and that's not a good thing. Uh, so uh, let, let, let's talk for a moment about uh, the economic value of whiteness. Uh, is, uh, is there an economic value to whiteness? There's infinite value to whiteness. Uh, whiteness shapes people's impressions, interpretations of behavior. It shapes everything. Um, and so Cheryl Har Harris, I quote her in my book in a paper she wrote in 1993, where she says in the, in the paper, whiteness as property, that whiteness mm -hmm. is the most valuable property that one can have in this country. And it's absolutely true. I mean, you can see two people uh, expressing discontent. And if the person is black, there are mm -hmm. all of these negative judgments that are made. If the person is white, particularly white women, there are accommodations made for their behavior. People cater mm -hmm. um, and want to serve and, and support them. Right. Now, now what about reparations, which, which is uh, very uh, uh, popular and controversial? Should reparations be paid to blacks? Absolutely. And why? Um, you have, for example, in 1862, President Lincoln signing the Homestead Act, mm -hmm. which almost exclusively gave preference to white immigrants and white Southerners when it came to getting 160 acres of land. And that was amended in, um, for example, 1909, I believe, to 320 acres of land, right? All of what we think white people have achieved or that they have gotten uh, it has been done through policy, through through laws, and, and, and laws that favored white that, folks. That favored white people. 
that favored white people. This is a pro-white country. And so if, if we are being honest about this country's history and how white people have enforced laws and policies for their benefit mm -hmm. and the benefit of white people, we need to also do the same for black people. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, what about the 40 acres and a mule? Matter of fact, uh, you can uh, keep the mule and just give me my 40 acres right downtown San Francisco, and I would be very, very happy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, why don't we just change that and put it in Manhattan, New York, That's so that right. uh, I can get more economic value for my uh, uh, 40 acres. And that's, as I said before, they can just keep the mule. So, uh, you know, we just have to come to grips, as you do in your book, with some of the injustices that have been inflicted upon black folks and will continue to be inflicted upon them until we resist. Let me say that we gotta go to re we gotta go to break. We will be right back with all about community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris, and my guest is Dante King.